So Corey Bojo from Seedmaster slash Dot Technologies, you are back at, uh, your companies are back again at uh, Canada's Farm Progress Show in Regina, showing not only Seedmaster drills, but state-of-the-art robotics with the Dot. Yeah. So tell me, uh, it's been a year or so since we talked about the progression of Dot, tell me where you're at with that right now. Sure. Um, things have gone very well. Uh, we're really pleased to have reported the to be able to report the level of interest from the farmer community out there. Uh, we ran a deposit program about six months ago or so, and we've got uh, farmers that have actually put money down on their dot units uh, for either production in 2019, 2020, 21, or 22 uh, from around the world. Uh, so it's it's kind of a, um, uh, it takes you, makes you go, holy cow, we got something here, and it's speaking to people across across the universe, which is great. Um, we've partnered with, um, aside from the Seedmaster partnership with DOT, we've also got a, num uh, th this, a number of other conversations ongoing with folks within North America and Europe. Uh, the most recent uh, uh, fully realized and solid partnership is with Pattison Liquid Systems out of Lemberg, Saskatchewan, and they've got a, a new piece that they're showcasing here as well at the Farm Progress Show. And there'll be a bigger demonstration at the Ag in Motion show uh, for both for all of our products. Um, just given that it's difficult to demonstrate in a in a parking lot, but um, since that point, ongoing conversations around safety and legislation and various jurisdictional con uh, di various conversations around safety in different jurisdictions and um, a bunch of different pieces like that. Evolution of the app to an extraordinary degree, which some of our folks would be happy to show you guys as well, or any of the audience out there too. Um, there's been a lot of evolution, beefed up the frame of DOT considerably from last year, um, and they've really refined a bunch of, uh, oh, we're just seeing a demonstration where they're going to try and stop it by hitting the, uh, the uh, safety wire with that chair. Interesting. They're always playing with new stuff. And actually, this is a playground for them to be able to still continually learn in as well, our programmers and our engineers, because it's, um, you know, there's, they're always playing. And whether it's at a show setting or whether it's in our shop, there's always experimentation going on. So I would argue that this is as much an R&D kind of uh, space as our shop is actually uh, for, for the duration of the show. But we're happy to showcase some really cool stuff here as well. So, so it's interesting, you're doing a safety demonstration. Has that been on people's minds, the, the, the autonomous aspect of it? Yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's always a part of people's, uh, a big part of people's apprehension to, uh, to adopt uh, autonomous technology. With stuff that like what happened in in Phoenix with the deaths around with death around a, an autonomous Uber vehicle and those kinds of things they're they're very present in the minds of people. Um, so yeah, it's it's we're we're prepared for those conversations and we're actively working. Safety is a huge part of uh, where we're focusing. Now, for a lot of farmers, they've got a lot of spread out territory. They've got to go down the roads, and yep. I understand you're talking with legislators now about about what it's going to take to allow this machine to actually travel on roads. Yeah. What, what's happening on that front? Well, before we actually launched DOT in July of last year, um, probably a couple of months before that, we started trying to get in front of uh, Saskatchewan bodies at the very least, SGI and Department of Transportation folks and that kind of thing. So we'll, uh, we're, we keep those conversations going. We've been engaged with um, another outside body to help make connections outside of Saskatchewan with other legislative bodies. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of different pieces that are moving, and um, a, a lot of the conversations around safety in various jurisdictions are going to be based on where we go next. So still for the next year to two, we're really still going to remain focused on Western Canada, Saskatchewan, Alberta, Manitoba, um, maybe one or two into the United States. But I think that jurisdiction, uh, the, the sticking points around autonomy, um, may create. Um, openings or may create uh, barricades for us to get into various markets. So again, we got to keep on top of all that stuff. But until then, we've got a trailer for farmers to use to cart it from one spot to the next. But I, the Saskatchewan bodies have been very intrigued by what we're doing and very supportive of what we're doing, definitely. So uh, farmers uh, that have signed up 
for are eager to get to get uh, their hands on one of their own. Yep. How, how is that schedule progressing for you? Well, we're still focusing on having uh, as many as six operating in the field through by the end of this seeding season. So we'll be uh, focusing on winter wheat seeding and um, harvest cart operations for the the fall of this year. And um, we are going to be uh, going into fuller production for the 2019. No, sorry, for the 2020 seed. No, 2019 seeding season. So following this fall, we will start to ramp up into a more fully realized production schedule. We can, I'm pretty sure we can't satisfy all of the orders that we received for 2019 based on number, but also based on uh, geography. There's a number of them that are in Australia or Eastern Europe or Ontario and those kinds of things. Wonderful spots to be in the world, definitely on the roadmap. But maybe not in 2019. <laughs> but you're working on it. We are. We are. We are. Yeah. And definitely. you'll fill those orders eventually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think an interesting thing too, by partnering with Pattison, they have some their sights set on uh, some different geographies with some of the technologies they're bringing to the market, um, which could open doors for Dot in in new areas that we perhaps hadn't put on the roadmap for another three or five years out. Maybe we'll start thinking about that for. 2019 or 2020 basically so things are continuing to evolve and yeah yeah just... we, we don't really necessarily have a fully baked roadmap and what we know is we, where where what we do as an organization is put out really cool stuff as soon as we can and we get um the momentum from that and the the intrigue of the the end consumer and we let that take us where it will um so we we're we're still trying to remain as nimble as possible and take us where the market uh, demand is, basically.